Hi there, I'm Fred Holmes, and you're watching a podcast where nostalgia comes to life. It's called Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show. Roll it! Welcome to Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show, the podcast where nostalgia comes alive. Since July of 2021, Jake and his friends have interviewed professionals in the worlds of acting, directing, writing, puppeteering, and many more. Who will they be chatting with in this week's interview? Find out in this Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show episode. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this episode of Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show, where nostalgia comes alive. Happy here with us. Thank you for joining. As always, I'm your host, Jake Duffenbar. With me today, as always, our co-hosts, Chris Bixby and Matt Bingle. How are you guys doing? Doing good. good. Hello, everybody. How are you, Jake? I'm doing great, Matt. Uh, thank you for asking us always. Excellent. Chris, what do we have for today? Today's guest is an actress and voice actress. She has done a lot of theater acting and productions such as Nonsense, Hairspray, and Beauty and the Beast. But most of you may know her as voicing the character Baby Bop in the long-running Barney franchise. Please welcome Julie Johnson. Julie, happy to have you here. Hi, I'm happy to be here. Thank you all for asking. Absolutely. Right, so we're glad to have, have you here. here. Absolute yes. pleasure. Especially, you know, us, you know, being a big boring fans you know it's 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 yep. absolute pleasure to have you have you here yes. which means a lot thank you i was a pretty big fan of barney too <laughs> and baby bob and <laughs> bj and and work <laughs> wonderful absolutely so to start this off could you tell our audience a little bit about yourself and what you do um i'm a and you will hear my texas accent i'm sure uh, at points uh i'm a, a sixth generation texan uh born and raised up in the north of dallas and always knew that i wanted to be an entertainer of some you know in, in some way and my mother played piano and we put together little shows for the rotary club and the lions club and all that from the time i was three and then uh, I continue that. And when I went to uh, Austin College up in Sherman, Texas, I, I told my parents I wanted to be a, an actor and I wanted to get a, a theater degree. And my mother said, oh, Julie, why would you want to do that? I said, because I've been performing my whole life. She never pushed me, you know, but she she knew that, that uh, it was a good thing to give to people, especially music and fun. So uh, then when I finished and got my degree, I, I moved into the Dallas area where there was a lot of work at that time and uh, a lot of commercial work and theater work and uh, ended up in New York doing uh, a Broadway show, two off-Broadway shows um, and uh, came, but in the meantime there, there was an audition for the Barney and Friends series, the first, um, the first year when they added a character and that was Baby Bob. And I, I went to the audition and I listened to all these women outside the the, the door where they were um, auditioning, and, and I thought, oh, they all sound like real children. And I had been doing nonsense for, for months, and my voice was a little ragged. I sounded kind of like this. And I thought, well, uh, this is I'll, I'll just do what I can. And I thought about that sound that a toddler makes in a toy store when they really, really want that toy that it doesn't look like mom is going to get them. And it's... <laughs> And that's that's how I booked Baby Bop. She was a I made her a, a screaming toddler in a toy store and they liked it. So but we of course we made her a little more lovable as the as the series went on. Right. I, I liked her when she was sassy. But um <laughs> and that's and then I've continued to do uh theater and tours and uh um we, I would manage to work it in between. Our, we'd tape for six months, and then I'd go six months and do theater. So, uh, And I just finished, just closed the um, international tour of uh, Come From Away, the story of all the air, the uh, people that landed during 9-11 up in Newfoundland. And 7,000 Newfoundlanders took care of 7,000 passengers for five days bef before they were able to come back into U.S. airspace. And it's one of the sweetest, kindest stories you will ever ever read about and i i suggest you do read about what humans how humans can be so kind nice definitely so you kind of brought up a little bit what was your childhood like and how did you grow up uh only child so center of attention at all time <laughs> uh <laughs> 
<laughs> and my parents were both teachers, uh, so I was around school a lot even before I went to school. Um, you know, we had, uh, what do we have, like uh, 19 kids in my first grade class, and uh, my, everybody's parents knew everybody, and my when I was in high school, someone in town saw me kind of probably run a red light. They called my dad <laughs> and said, Julie is driving recklessly down here in downtown, and you need to talk to her. And they said, I'll get right on it. There, it was really, truly that village, you know, that helps helps raise each other's children, whether the children like it or not. Uh, so that that was, uh, you know, it, it was a, a kind of bucolic and uh, and you know, nice. But I always knew I wanted to be. I wanted to be. Uh, someplace where the action is, you know, and then, and now I'm back living in my hometown because I've had, I've, I've had enough action. <laughs> I want some relaxation now. Nice. Really nice. Very nice. So do you remember what your first acting job was? Uh, yes, it was right out of college. And, um, uh, let me think. Oh, oh, it was, it was a, a play at Dallas Repertory Theater, and it was Noel Coward, give me just a second, um, Hay Fever, Hay mm. Fever, and I played Jackie mm. Corrit in the little shop girl that was not well educated, but she was nice, so that, uh, that was my very first uh, show, we were the you were paid if you were an equity actor, a member of the actors union, but they had non-equity where you got your built your points up so you could someday join the union. So it was not paid, but uh, it was with some wonderful Dallas actors and a, a fun chance to, to pull out a, a new accent and uh, and portray a funny a funny character, a funny girl. <laughs> Nice, nice. So before working on Barney, as I mentioned in your intro, you performed in the musical Nonsense as a Sister Mary Amnesia. Uh, what was that experience like? Ah, that was so much fun. I actually did ended up doing five different productions um, it, over over the years. And whenever Nonsense opened somewhere, it was there. It was extended. It stayed and it stayed because people just loved it. And the, the interaction with the audience and, uh, you know, you don't have to be Catholic to get to get the jokes and everything. But if you are Catholic, evidently, it's just even funnier. Uh, and 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 it's silly fun and it's lighthearted. And but the music is good and and all the characters are very uh, distinguish distinguishable. And um, uh, Mary Amnesia is uh, she a crucifix fell on her head at the at the Abbey and uh, she had amnesia. And what she finally uh, remembers in the show is that she was actually going to be a country and Western singer. So I was able to incorporate two different, uh, two, 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 uh, Mary Amnesia talked a little like this and a little bit like as after I started thinking about it, I thought, it's got a little baby bop in it. I need to be careful. <laughs> you know, we don't want to mix those two up. Yeah, but, yeah, actually, um, you know, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, Patty mentioned that I, too. Once I got my memory back, uh, she was a good old country gal. <laughs> nice, nice. Yes, and you and you and Patty got to kind of first meet, you know, yeah, kind of yeah. on that musical, which I was pretty nice. Uh, she was Sister Robert <laughs> Ann, and moment. fabulous. Yes, absolutely. So, so moving on to uh, Barney, we kind of talked about how uh, you got Baby Bop, but uh, what was it like doing uh, the stage show Barney in concert at the Majestic Theater? Because that was Baby Bop's first ever appearance. That, that was my debut. Absolutely. And, and you know, at that time, no, they said, we are not sure that the kids will, will really want to see another dino. Barney is so popular, you know, so there was no guarantee that I would continue with it or anything. It was a, a, a one-off, as we call it. And, uh, and, um, I enjoyed, I thoroughly enjoyed doing, I got to know Bob West that way. We were down in the basement <laughs> with, no with, uh, I'm sure he told you with the, with the booze they had constructed for us out of felt and, you know, not, uh, they don't usually do a lot of voiceover things there at the Majestic, but they made us comfortable. And we watched it, we watched it on the video. We had some lines, but we were also given a little bit of free reign to, you know, uh, ad lib a bit, you know, not, not a whole lot. 
and because you didn't also didn't want to throw the kids the child actors you know they you didn't want to throw something at them but if it was just dino to dino and we did this in the series too uh we were able to to put a little bit of our own uh you know touch on it and then if they if something wasn't working for them we when we did it again they'd say okay do it this time no no ad libs so we'd always have our backup plan <laughs> nice oh it's great yeah m amazing amazing concert we love barn concert very fun um, yes. it was yes and oh, yeah. it was packed oh and yeah the children i had never seen anything like this because i didn't have children i wasn't married at the time and and an only child so i had no nieces and nephews or anything uh when those babies <laughs> they were panning the audience at the end when when we started singing i love you and yeah. those little children, it was like a Beatles concert with tiny people. They were <laughs> they were like little arms, like yeah, 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 yeah. and I started pouring tears while I was trying to sing. I love you, you know. It was like they were they were so invested. They were so invested in it, and they were so excited to see Barney because at that point, that was the first time he'd ever been, except I think he'd gone to some malls, you know, and done, maybe done something like that. Right, I'm not sure. right. Yeah. So don't, yeah. don't hold me to it. But they were, you know, and just just standing <laughs> on their mom and dad's laps in the chairs, you know, reaching oh for Barney gosh, or doing yeah. all the motions, you know, whatever. So, it, it, you know, Barney and the Beatles, they just bring the house down. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so now, um, Baby was also appear in the final Backyard Gang home video, Walk with Barney. Uh, was liking to do that. Um, yeah, but that was. Uh, see, you're gonna you know more about it than I do. It was that before that was before we started season one on PBS. That yeah, it was just before. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And and th that was a new. I had done. Uh, had I done any film? By then, yes, I had done a couple of film, just little small film roles, um, and a, and was an extra on the series Dallas. Now you really know how old I am, um, but it 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 was it was so different because we didn't have the audience, you know, to to feed us, you know, and to know is this working? Is this working? So it was kind of interesting to to just put it out there and create and hope it went well and and you know and it did and then uh it was not too long after we did the majestic the, and for all we knew they were already in in negotiations with pbs i don't know mm -hmm. but uh then we got the the call that you know we were going to have a uh, one season on pbs and after that first season right. and you all may know this they they were talking about canceling it and there was a there was a an outcry from, yeah, yeah, from the drop. masses yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes because of the fans yeah because of the fans because of the yep. fans it kept going absolutely yes. and luckily they listened to the fans you know and, and oh yeah thought, yep. oh okay because <laughs> it you know if you're an adult and you don't, don't have children or your children are already grown i think you probably didn't get all the value of it yeah you know, mm -hmm. right necessarily when it first came out but if you watch one of my college friends called me one day and said i just want to thank you for the time that i have to load the dishwasher and take a shower and wash my hair because my child does not move while barney <laughs> is on screen she doesn't <laughs> move she sits and watches every bit of it so thank you <laughs> and I said, it's the least i can do <laughs> yeah. but you know and they're and they were learning you know if nothing if nothing else they were learning about kindness and oh, that yeah. was kind of what was so weird about how people were so unkind it's not all not all by any means but some people were so unkind about a character that that was just all about kindness and and loving each other and and yeah. loving yourself and being uh you know you don't have to be happy all the time you can have right. all your emotions but you know and i i think um now of course i meet grown i mean i meet 30 year olds that watched barney and and they tell me how much it meant to them either they would come home from school and their parents weren't going to be home for a while and they could even when they were long past barney age they could turn on barney and feel safe and and you know cared for so that's a that's a pretty good thing to have been a part of yes 
Absolutely. Absolutely. That's a really good transition. Moving on to Barney and Friends. There were a lot of episodes over so many years. Are there any episodes or storylines that Baby Bop was in that stick out as some of your favorites? Um... I think I, the things that the ones that it, it's really hard because that's like which of your children is your favorite you know you're right not right supposed yeah. to answer that question number one if you, right. you have one and you right. just, but it's it is um uh, i loved when we got to do the the longer like the specials like the christmas yes oh, yes yeah. 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 Christmas. Love, love christmas love that special love that and we, so we made effort too to make sure that kids whose families celebrated it at, at something different at that time of year or or didn't have a celebration for that time of year for it not to be so um brainwashy you know <laughs> just try yeah. to try to get children you know uh, away from their family's customs and here have they believe in santa and da, da, da. it was just it was just fun and and um it could reinforce those you know again kindness and and that christmas isn't all about did i get the biggest most expensive toy you know it's it's about something else it's about giving your giving your heart definitely i think uh, one, of, one of my favorite um, episodes, if you remember, is the, uh, the episode, Oh Brother, She's My Sister, which oh, focuses oh, on Baby Bob and BJ arguing. <laughs> <laughs> that yes. was fun. And then, and, and then the, the sadly passed Tommy DePaola, yeah. who yeah. made a few appearances on Barney, oh. uh, yeah. was in that. Yeah, we yeah. had we had some great people that came in and did our you know our mother goose and oh yeah um, yeah, yeah you mine. got to yeah you got to portray mother goose for for a season ten episode called mother goose yeah that yeah. was pretty interesting I but, mean and uh, uh, sometimes uh, the little dinos didn't get to have as much time with that special guest person but we still got to right. watch you know but it was more important for the kids and Barney to be. A part of that and you know you can fill the screen with just too much to look at if you right if you, and i think they did that well of, of making sure the focus was was um uh, accessible to a child you know instead of throwing so much stuff all the time that it got chaotic yeah right. um a, a look at me on three where it's like it celebrates baby bop's third uh third, third birthday, birthday. Um, which, I was which two was, for um, years, and then all of a sudden, I got a birthday. <laughs> and and that was that was uh, BJ's debut, his very first episode. Yes. Yep. Yeah, and, and the, if the shoe fits, I mean, there's so there's so many. And yeah. I don't know if you uh, noticed that the so dinos episodes over the years. Of course, Barney was a certain size always, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Baby Bob was very big. And they did have children say, "Why?" But when they did a you know, like a little survey of children. Mm -hmm. Why is if baby Bob's little, why is she so big? Why is she so right? tall? You know. Yeah. And uh uh and sure enough, so the next season, baby Bob was was shorter. And then BJ came along and he was really almost as tall as, as Barney. Same feedback yeah. in the next season. Hmm, BJ didn't take his vitamins, so he's not growing. <laughs> <laughs> in fact he's shrinking. We put him in the dryer. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's me. I I would not say that around a toddler. I'm so sorry. I'm uh, saying this. Uh, uh, that's great. <laughs> no, no worries at all. So now I'm, I'm kind of curious. Do you have any favorite songs that Baby, Baby Bob got to sing? I, I did love the Look at Me, Me, Me. I'm 333. Three, three. I love yes. that one. Yeah, um, and, uh, um, well, of course. Uh, I every night, every day when we, and we all had them pre-recorded, but the "I Love You" made me cry <laughs> every uh, time because uh, it's so sweet, you know. It really is. And um, we're a happy family, you know, and that's a that's something that that was good for children to hear. But I'm not sure that all children could say that that you know that everything. No, no family is happy all the time, <laughs> but you know what I mean? It, it was something I think that gave, maybe gave some children hope that someday, you know, 
we may we will be a happy family you yeah. know whatever whatever was going on uh i just i do know that i had a lot of adults tell me that barney gave them a feeling of safety and that and that's important for little ones they have they need to feel safe oh yeah mm-hmm. oh yeah absolutely um the bebop pop the mac and cheese and, my, and, 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 and of course um, of course i'm my yellow blankie oh, yes so, yeah. so wonderful yes. amazing songs the Bay Bob got to sing yeah. over the years. It's, it's so uh, wonderful. Well, yeah. thank you. I didn't write them, but I did record right, them. Right. So. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There were a lot of good songwriters on the show, too. <laughs> yeah, we songwriter. really did. The melodies were great. They were accessible, but they weren't just one thing all the time. You know, it, it they they really gave it a good variety, and the orchestrations and everything really, I think, re- really helped uh, children tap into um, – uh, music and music is huge Mm -hmm. music helps math (laughs) you learn music you get you help it helps you learn math you know there's lots of reasons for music to be a part of of uh, all of us absolutely so going back a bit to the barney home videos i know of course you mentioned the holiday ones but do you have any other favorite uh home videos baby bop was in it's uh, it's so hard to say (laughs) because i loved every one of them um there was a Let's Play School where Baby Bob had her own school. Yes. Oh, yeah. Love that yeah. Video. It, okay. I love that one. Okay. You the, have... the, the sets on those yeah. home videos were amazing. Like, there there was that. I think there was, like, an outer space one. Yeah, Born Outer uh-huh. Space. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Flying Games. Um, yeah. Uh, Once Upon a Time. Oh, I'm yeah. You all remember it much better than I do. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, you've done so much, you know, home videos. It's not like we like, like, yeah. Do, do I remember doing this? You know, you've done so <laughs> much, so many episodes in home videos. Like, do no, I remember doing no, this. No, see, it's no. not like IMDb where it's a hit or miss. Mm-mm. Yeah. No. No, we've had no that too many videos. times on this show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, oh, absolutely. What, what a great one. I think my favorite one as a kid was, um, if you remember, uh, Barney's Adventure Bus. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I still have a childhood. Um, I still have my too. childhood copy of oh, yeah, that. Um, another one of my favorites, Imagination Island. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I that one was fun. Classic. Yeah. Yeah. So great. And I, I enjoyed doing the movie too. Uh, yeah, Barney's Great Adventure. Yeah. Yeah. Great movie. Movie. Love around, that one. Well, we got to go to Montreal, Montreal for one thing. Yes. In Montreal, Canada, which was gorgeous, and the sap was just coming in on the trees, so there were buckets hanging on all the maple trees, and it was really bucolic. It was just gorgeous, and that was an old, real old farmhouse, and and uh, we there was a barn where we had our booths, so we walked in on hay yeah. and had the sweet smell of farm animals <laughs> around <laughs> us, <laughs> but it was, oh, it was so beautiful and so well done. Oh, yeah. And I love yeah, that. Was. I love the char- the character Twinkin in that movie is just so yes, adorable. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. I wish I wish you should you know should have done more with that character. That would yeah. Yeah, yeah, have been cool. That'd be so great. Even just for a little cameo for, you know, for even for like in the in the um, in the school era era or the, or even the, the park era even, you know, that would have been Yeah. Uh, pro- probably probably the school era probably. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 Yeah, but uh, speaking of uh, filmed on location, there were also a few Barney Home Videos filmed on location. For example, mm-hmm. let's let's go to the zoo, which was filmed at the Fort Worth Zoo, Fort Worth and the Land of Make and the Land of Make Believe, filmed at Universal Studios, Orlando, Florida. Yes, I feel like I channeled my inner Nickelodeon there. <laughs> what was it like <laughs> working on the uh, on location videos? The, the zoo was so much fun because uh, watching people, you know, of course we had parts of it. Uh, roped off for so we could get the work done but you'd see people walking along and they think oh you know go go it's just a film uh, film crew and then one of the dinos would get saw get spotted and it was like Mm -hmm. it just just people would cram where they could get to watch and have their kids up on their shoulders so they could see see the filming and and uh yeah it was it was great a little uh it was a really early morning to get uh, to commute from Dallas to Fort Worth uh, at like four o'clock in the morning to get over there. Oh, yeah. But um, oh, wow. I I just remembered thanking my blessings that I had it, you know. So 
that mm-hmm. was that was fun and and also for us because then we get to walk around the zoo when we were when we wrapped oh yeah and uh you know yeah. and go spend time with the zoo animals that was that was a lot of fun oh yeah yeah such wonderful videos and really going is. back to going back to the holiday videos for a second um the ones they they also done the big was also a part of a <laughs> which fun that we chatted um yesterday we're taping it here uh, this uh, we actually got a chat with um uh, Stephen white he was one of the barney wires and, uh-huh. and, and he got to mention um about barney's halloween party where you know which he loved where part where the time where baby bobby bj got the trigger treat for halloween and then you know baby bob gets all those candy and bj I was just had a celery. Yeah. A l- yeah, that's lumpy it. celery. Yeah. <laughs> the writing on that show was also phenomenal. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Gosh. Oh, oh, yeah. And, so and, and Barney's, Christmas, uh, Barney's Christmas Star. Christmas Star, yes. Yeah. The other oh, one, wasn't that the one where we had uh, the they had a little um, Halloween uh, celebration in the school? Yeah. In, mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh-huh. And, yeah. Yeah. You got to. Yeah. You got to make a little cameo of that too. I'm, yeah. I'm the. I'm the fortune teller. I didn't uh. tell anyone's fortunes, but I was a fortune teller. <laughs> yeah. That's interesting. <laughs> That's one. You're cool. going to be on wow. a children's television show. I can see it. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. One. One for videos as well. So now, um, so now I'm kind of curious. Another stage show, Baby Bob was kind. Of, uh, were part of a. Earlier, um, then you kind of mentioned a little bit of boring, boring concert. Now another one we're going to talk about a uh, boring live in New York City. It was like in, to go you know, to ways see music hall and you know do that with all all you know the sold out shows. Yeah. Oh yeah. At the yes, um, we had a uh, it was at Radio City Music Hall, and that's huge. And we were we were packed, and uh, we the voices. I bet Patty or somebody's already told you this story. Our booths, they, they, at that point, we had gotten portable uh, soundproof booths for, for all the voices. And so we were down underneath the stage, which is fine. We always watched it on a monitor anyway. It'd be distracting if we were trying to watch the actual uh, action and had to have our scripts there. Mm-hmm. But it was also where they kept the elephant. Oh yeah! Yes, yes, yes. I got to mention that too. The classic classic elephant story. Elephants have elephants have no manners about when they (laughs) when when they do a do a smelly or (laughs) and we we all were like oh. Oh, it's like being in a in a barn down here and hay and everything. Of course, I don't know if you notoriously singers and voice actors have allergies. For some reason, we just get the, you know, we get every allergy there is. And so the hay was making a sneeze and the uh, the elephant's uh, gift that it was dropping every now and then was not a not a good smell. But then we also reminded ourselves we are at Radio City Music Hall entertaining right. all these children. Yeah, like so a once in a lifetime. We'll embrace the elephant, not for real, but we'll embrace the element uh, the elephant. So yeah, I, I I love Born Live in New York City. It's such a wonderful such amazing. Amazing. It is. Yes, the, the production of it is too. amazing. And I Yes, yeah. and, and Matt and Matt got to it not too long ago. He actually went to uh, New York for seeing um, Sesame Street the musical. And you he beat me got, to it once see, again, see, Jake. See Let me do for once. See the building? <laughs> and, and, and he started yep. seeing a music hall. And he was yeah. like, Barney performed Barney there. performed there. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, I went to see uh, Sesame Street, the musical at Theater uh-huh. Row in New York. This was maybe about a year and a half ago. And uh, I, this was my first time in New York. And I, if you folks get a chance to see New York City in person, it is so surreal. Like, it really is. And uh, it, it was uh, it was me and then another friend of ours uh, separately, a uh, good friend of ours, Brandon Smith. Hi, Brandon. Yeah, <laughs> um, Brandon. He, Hello, um, Brandon. He went separately, and we both had the same reaction. When we uh, both of us only saw the exterior of Radio City, but as soon as you see Radio City, the only thing that we thought of Barney played there. That's the only yeah. thing. <laughs> yep. Such I saw guy. that on video too. I think Barney Live in New York City. I need to get that oh, on video. A lot of good the, ones. The, the, the production, the that. production's absolutely amazing, and it's crazy. Oh, yes. How, how fast? The wankster. 
and then Wait, so, yeah it, it's and crazy then how fast. The, the kids and the audience and, oh yeah, you know, yeah it's just, yeah, it's just yeah. Cool. in a barney bag it was so great and david yeah. boss who was the original yes. body yeah. Yes. The yep. Back he had served yes. in yeah, our military, it. and when he was That's done, right. we were it's... able to bring him, uh, bring him back along to do that and to have a have a yet another role. He was a great dancer, yeah. very, very oh, light, and, you know, limber, and yeah. So that was fun to have him back on board too. Yeah, the produ the production of it was just a absolutely amazing. Oh uh, yeah. It really was like with the, the mark, design, like with everything. the marching band and everything. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. yes. And it, yeah. and it, and it sold out like like all the. I, all I the was shows, just like, gonna twelve say, shows. Yeah. All, twelve oh, shows. Like two hours. I mean, it's, it's two not. Hours. It's not. It's not a common thing that that ha that you know. It's not. It's not a common thing for. Not not for not for, and especially not for nineteen. They sold out in late ninety three. Yeah. Uh, late nineteen ninety. Yeah. Late nineteen ninety three. Mm -hmm. Like this wasn't even for like another three months till like March of ninety four. Right. They sold out. We've mentioned this on the show before. It's all twelve shows sold out in two hours. Yeah, I think I, th I think Stephen White told us only Beth Midler was faster. But ah. uh, well, what an honor! <laughs> yeah, that's an honor and, to us. I mean, that's I mean that's incredible for especially for nineteen ninety four because you don't have the technology you do now. So right. for. For for twelve shows in a six thousand seat amphitheater, is just out of this world. Like it really, it still blows my mind now that they sold out so quick. But that's so that's well, yeah. how huge Barney was back then. I mean, it was yeah. huge. Yeah, amazing. Absolutely. Yeah, and they and were we like just were, we just plugged away. Of course, we added that, you know, element of doing yeah, the live yeah. concert and everything. But otherwise, on television, uh, on PBS, we were just kind of plugging away, doing what we'd always done. You know, we didn't make mm -hmm. a lot of big changes or get, uh, you know, uh, too fancy, if you will. You know, we just kept it because because the the simplicity, I think, was another thing that helped uh, to that one and a half to two year old to five and six, especially that younger age group the simplicity and the re repetition of songs, sometimes maybe with new words, but repetition of tunes. If a child already knows the tune, they can learn the words more quickly. And that's a feeling of, of, uh, accomplishment, you know? So that was, uh, it, it was all very, very well thought out by our writers. Uh, even though it may look like it was just, Oh, some people put on costumes and jumped around, you know, and giggled, but it was yeah. very, very, <laughs> very well thought out for, for, uh, for the good of the children, for education, and for uh, joy, and uh, you know, music, yeah, everything. You know, for me especially, everything comes back to music. You know, music is music is math, and math is music. <laughs> Absolutely, uh, Def definitely. So, now, what was it like getting to voice uh, Baby Bob for the Barney merch and the games and stuff like that? Uh, that was it. Was usually very quick. You know, we'd been doing the the voices, and we uh, we'd go into a microphone, and they'd give us a list of things we'd say, and and uh, do three or four takes on each one, so that they could uh, figure out which you know little bit of tone out. But the Baby Bop too, though, because she's little, so she's not gonna have a uh, you know a huge vocabulary. <laughs> she right. but she knows the words that she knows, and. Uh, so it was it was fun to get to do that, and I always enjoyed singing the songs too. That was that was wonderful to get to sing the songs. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So uh, I know you you did a little bit of it earlier, but is it fine if we can hear a little bit of Baby Bop? I think so. Let me see. What could I say? I want to tell you how much fun I am having doing this. <laughs> oh, you guys are so nice. <laughs> uh, You're making me giggle. Oh, thank you. You too. You too. Hi, Baby Bob. How's, how's BJ? BJ is fine. He's, he's been outside playing in the yard, and now he's smelly. <laughs> Mommy told him to take a shower. 
Mm, that's good at least <laughs> now, oh, that's they, great. they never let me do that on the show but I had right. some things that I could have interjected right. like, like, yeah. like, when, like when you're doing like doing, like doing breaks or something you and Patty and oh yeah and Dean and Bob, Bob you know just go whine to each other like, so oh, cause I remember when we've interviewed some of the uh, like the body performers like Josh and, and, and Kyle, Kyle and, Nelson, and, and Kyle they talked great guys they, yeah they talked about how like Behind the behind the scenes, they would like hear the voices say some rather interesting things. Yes. <laughs> yep. Well, they figured out pretty quickly that they were going to have to give us a mute button <laughs> so that we yeah, could talk to right. each other between takes, but that the children couldn't <laughs> couldn't hear right. it. And when they got it for us, we we kind of you know we hadn't been using them, so every now and then we <laughs> forget, and somebody on the floor <laughs> would say, "Voices mute." Mute! The kids are on the set! Mute! <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> oh, man. That's wonderful. But, you know, jaded old performers can only be sweet and childlike for so long. <laughs> right, yeah. Right, right. I'm so I want to shut this. Is, I don't know if I'll do this well. Oh, it's going to be too reflective. This was one of our oh. first things that we did. There's wow. Bob Best. And that's a woman named Jane Pauley that used to be on NBC as a, a oh yes a oh wow journalist and and also a host yes. and that was when it, just the two of us so that was the first year sorry about the reflection but anyway that's fine. Uh, oh look I'm finding it but that oh, was us go. on the uh, NBC um, stage on the Today there, Show yeah at radio at oh, New Radio City that's and great. Yeah. Huh, let me see. What did I find here? <laughs> you probably were showed this by by some of us too, but it's it was our first uh, oh, look that yeah. set and a CD. Ooh, How old is that? Yeah. But that's wow. the gold. Uh, which wow, one was that? Awesome. That was uh, uh, gold sales award for which one was it? Pardon me, I should have had this written down for you guys. Oh, Barney's yeah. favorites, sure. volume two. Wait, two. And then here. Was the real? Was the real? This is when we went platinum. <laughs> oh, oh wow. wow! And I'm sorry if I'm not giving you a good shot of this. No, that's okay. Fine. 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 That's why they didn't put me on a camera. See. Yeah. <laughs> but wow. that one. Wow. Is, yeah, they they did this nice framing of it. That one is uh, Barney Barney's favorites. There's the there's the cover yeah. for it. Oh, yep, there yeah. It is. Yep. That that new technology right up there that had just come out. Yes. So that's great. That's how long ago that it was. New but... technology that had just come out, and now they're kind of obsolete now. Yeah, I know. that's people are literally using them as coasters. All... You know. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah, now there's places like Spotify coasters, where you really. can stream them, and of course YouTube, which has anything and everything. I mean, yeah. oh yeah, stuff like CDs and especially like audio cassettes. Because those oh, those especially. are those are still big. Because I was born in two thousand, audio cassettes As were still I. were still fairly popular then. But you know they're mm -hmm. much obsolete now. I was born in two thousand four. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yep. I have clothes and shoes in my closet that are older than you. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Two thousand. That was just that was just yesterday, wasn't it? <laughs> Feels like it. <laughs> Well, I, I will say this: you all are are uh, far beyond your uh, your age in your ability to interview and uh, conduct a, um, you know, conduct a. The, uh, this is the, you kids call this a podcast, right? Is that what it's called? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> I just didn't. You're say, welcome. <laughs> I no. didn't want to say the wrong thing and and be sitting here acting like I knew what I was talking about. So. Nah, it's all no right. Worries. It's all right. It's all good. So moving on from Barney, you are also a country musician. How did that come into play for you? Um, I've always, uh, I really have always loved country music, even though I listen to a lot of show show music and perform show music. And uh, uh, a fellow named Sonny Franks and I, who had done uh, Pump Boys and Dinettes together and a couple of other shows, uh, started writing. He did most of the writing, but we started writing songs together because we both were theater people who also loved country music. And you don't find a lot of theater people that are into it. And um, I just took a chance to to um, record 
I found a good, uh, Sonny knew a good place in Dallas to record. And, um, and at the time too, I was also doing a show called A Closer Walk with Patsy Cline, where I portrayed hmm. Patsy Cline. She was a singer from the, from the fifties that if you've ever heard the song Crazy, uh, that's the woman that sang it and made it famous. And so I would sell my CDs after, because I, you couldn't get the rights to the Patsy Cline songs. Well, you could, but it was horribly expensive. So people would want to hear something that I sang. And I, I had these two CDs that I'd sell live at concerts. And yes, they were CDs, <laughs> but, um, so that was, that was a, that was a fun thing to do and also to express, you know, yourself and, and, uh, and get to have great musicians around me and sing harmonies and along with singing the melody. So I, I thoroughly enjoyed doing that. And I have several boxes of them left over. If anybody would like one, I'll, yeah, I'll give them away. You can use them as a coaster. <laughs> we do, we do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you got and you also uh, recorded some albums too which i was pretty pretty awesome too yeah yeah well those were both the, yeah the, uh, those were album uh album size it's you know as far as number of, of songs on each one uh cds and um so yeah that's and and record you know i did some uh, commercial recording too earlier in in my career there and here in Dallas, and uh, so I've, I've had a, a, for somebody that, you know, except maybe for Barney, I'm not somebody that's a household name, you know, and I know that, and that doesn't bother me a bit, because I got to do what I love doing, and I've never had to worry about, you know, having to have a bodyguard with me, or, you know, some of the things that people who become real celebrities, it's it's not all, it's not all um, goodness and kindness, you know, they 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 had to live a, a hard life sometimes be, just because the public so wants to see them and they'll they'll get to where they follow them around and do do things that you know kind of keep you from getting to have a real life so i'm i'm happy with where where uh, my adventures have taken me and um here i am back in my hometown yes which yep. is always nice yes always nice to come back home yeah yeah Yes. Yeah. So going going back to a bit to acting, you also acted in the films Pure Country and The Apostle. Uh, could mm -hmm. you kind of talk a bit about working on those? That was, um, those were, I, I was kind of surprised when I got, especially the first one, which was Pure Country. Um, but again, I had not let go of my Texas accent. <laughs> I hadn't erased it. And so I was able to to utilize the way uh, a lot of people in my hometown area uh, sounded and uh, got to meet uh, uh, George and uh, and his wife, Bo. Yeah, George Trey, yeah. Yeah, uh -huh. they were they were very nice. He had his big tour bus there on the on the set where we were we had a little place down south of Dallas in a little bitty town that I cannot remember the name of, but uh, they filmed there uh, instead mm -hmm. of on a, on a soundstage. And so we uh, uh, got to meet him. I got back four or five days of work out of that. It was supposed to be done in one day and it kept raining. So, <laughs> so I ended up with four days out of that. And uh, he was, uh, he was as nice as he could be. Uh, you could oh, tell it was his first movie and he, you could tell that he felt humbled by doing his first movie. You know, he wasn't going to try to fool anybody. He, that was his first time to do any acting. And I thought he did incredibly well. And uh, then the other, uh, the other film that I did, the apostle, uh, yeah. uh, I, but God, I have a beautiful picture on the other side of the house with the, uh, with, um, Oh, help me. Uh, <laughs> um, the famous actor that was the, the directed it and uh, why can't i think of his name oh this is awful um I anyway if i could quickly I, find it i'm about oh, to uh, yeah, yeah. Ro robert duval robert duval yes robert duval yes. yes he was he was amazing and so nice and then he asked me after i filmed my my uh my little bit there, he said, he said, listen, you can stay here all day and you can sit over there in my director's chair and you can watch me direct some more scenes. He, he, the casting director on that had been a friend of mine in Dallas for years, Ed Johnston. So that was how I, I was able to, to snag a, an audition. You know, Ed didn't have the power to, 
to cast me, but he got me the audition. So he he let me uh, sit and watch him direct and then watch him do a couple of scenes. And I just couldn't have been any more thrilled or humbled because he's he's so good. And he's still working. He's still I just watched something That's that great. I think he had filmed two years ago. Uh, I can't I can't remember the name of that either. But, you know, well, this is what happens. Right. <laughs> take notes. Always no take and, notes. Uh, yes. Oh yeah. And, and then before I get to very close to wrapping up, and you and also done some like um some theater production, Hairspray and Beauty and the Beast. So that was uh, really lots. Yeah. And uh, like I said, I just got off of it. We actually started the tour in 2018, and we went all, all over the U.S. and and Canada. Uh, come from away about yeah. the about the planes that landed up in in Newfoundland during 9-11 and that was one of the most glorious experiences of the saddest thing to 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 have to remember but it was a story that made people who remembered the 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 nightmare that was 9-11 to know that from 9-12 to 9-17 five days seven about seven thousand people in in newfoundland and that and the area took care of seven thousand passengers that landed in airplanes they because airspace u.s airspace was shut down so there were all these planes all over europe uh that that were going to be coming in but they couldn't so they had a, a huge airstrip from world war ii up there that would take all those planes and they uh they landed uh seven thousand passengers and close to three three hundred uh planes that landed up there and they fed them they got their prescriptions filled for them because they couldn't take their bags off in case you know nobody knew there could there have been a bomb planted on in some of these planes could you know it, it was all such an un, unknown uh ne we've never been down this road before kind of situation right. so we and we got to meet some of those wonderful people who helped, and they were so kind and nice. so humble. And I, uh, the woman that I played, was a combination of two women that that were teachers and and helped uh, get the schools ready to be able to house people and feed them in the cafeterias and that kind of thing. Nice. And I, I said, I want to tell you how much we appreciate uh, everything that you all did. And she said, Ah. It wasn't that much. We just made a few sandwiches for people. <laughs> and that was the way she looked at it. They fed they fed over 7,000 people for five days. And she, ah, we just made a few sandwiches for people. That's just the way they are. That you could That's go up great. there right now and say, I'm I'm an American and I I, you know, come have heard from come from away and then oh come on in, come on in. You would you are you hungry? Are you hungry? Would you like a little something to eat? Come on in. Come on in. That's just their that's their whole zeitgeist up there, you know. Oh, that's it's just nice. wonderful. So before before we get to the last question here, I do also want to ask, uh, what are you doing now? Can you share any uh thing you're currently working on? I have now I'm I'm focusing more on um commercial and film okay. here here in uh in, in Texas. Um and I uh let's see, I've got I've had uh two different shoots. Um and they're they're not out yet, but they're you know they're commercial shoots, uh, and um, yeah, because that's driving the sixty miles each way to Dallas to do theater. I love doing theater in Dallas, but right now I've just gotten home from that tour, and I'm really excited to be in my own bed and <laughs> in my own kitchen where I know where the things are, and you know, and it's just I'm I'm sure I'm just regenerating a little bit. You know, I'm I will probably. Uh, hopefully get to do something else again and maybe even a, a short tour but there's also comes a time when you when you want to uh, stay home and and uh, be be with friends be with family my my son lives around here and you know instead of calling from Timbuktu and saying hi just wanted to call from Timbuktu nice to see you I'll see you someday and you know hang up so <laughs> it's a um, but I, I do feel like that that tour, that show in particular, was something that was that the world needed to see, especially post, uh, you know, COVID. And well, we're not really post COVID, but post everything being shut down, it you could feel the audiences feeling like, OK, we may get back to some form of normal life. And, uh, you know, a lot of people were luckily were wearing masks and uh, helping keep each other safe 
And uh, so we 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 were able to get back on the road and and have houses full of people. And uh, and you could tell they were really so thrilled to have something back in their lives that seemed like normal life. Absolutely, and can I, and can I wait for what for whenever it will be out? We we done and see what you know what's going to you know, be released soon. And then fine enough, I'm you and I want to quickly mention before we actually actually ask a lot last question. Um, um, recently, um, like a few years ago, you um, Patty and Bob actually got kind of like chat with some fans with Galaxy Con virtual. Ah, uh, yes. Yep, we did. And it was actually during that time when. Uh, when things were shut down and we did a, yeah, we did uh, um, an, an evening together like this, you know, with the, uh, with our being able to see each other and we hadn't seen each other in a long time. And, and uh, it was, we were having as much fun as anybody, you know, get, reminiscing and, and telling the stories and, and uh, me saying, now what was that person's name? And then being able to, because <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah. uh, sometimes right. things just somebody hit delete in my head and <laughs> and it worked <laughs> yes uh, happens and um and there's actually a story that patty got to chat got told us about where there's one there's one person who's actually now like an art teacher who's like who's a big fan of big big fan of barney how like it was kind of his a uh, person inspiration to be an art teacher uh, oh how and, cool yeah, 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 yeah. Like, yeah, you, yeah, you, and yeah, you were, yeah, you were, you were, um, you were there too. Yeah. It was just Patty just told us about that story, and it was yeah. just so moved by it. That, that is, and I had cool. forgotten about that, that story, but you're right. That was that. Yeah, that's yeah. That that's something when when somebody is inspired, and especially and especially because a lot of times they they were inspired when they were three years old or they were inspired when they're twenty three because they still enjoy the message that Barney gives out how you know what spread when love people would, and, yeah yep. when people would be kind of rude i'd i'd say well you know we're not we didn't really film this for you and your age yeah group. we right. it for your children and your children love us and that's all that counts you know i didn't exactly. there were times hey. i wanted to say listen you but <laughs> <laughs> right, now, yeah. you know no i wouldn't do that <laughs> Yes. It's always better to uh, to uh, you know kind of shut them down with some kindness. I think uh, absolutely if yes. wanting to because you wouldn't believe absolutely. what people will say to you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so to end this off, the last question Jake's going to ask is a question we ask all of our guests at the end. Go ahead, Jake. Thank you, Chris. Uh, of course, this podcast is called Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show. Uh, when you think of nostalgia, what do you think of in your own words? How would you define the word nostalgia? A great question um and you can see this is i i was not pre-given this question so i i'm going to have to think on the fly nostalgia it's going back and reliving something really wonderful it didn't have to be expensive or or time consuming it could be a moment it could be uh, a smell that's something, you know, somebody's cooking something that you go, oh, my mother, my grandmother used to cook this. It can be anything. And if it brings you a sense of joy and calm all at the same time, it's just, it's just golden. It's, yes. That's nostalgia. Absolutely. That's wonderful. Great, Great words said, Don. Julie, thank you so much for taking the time to do this. This was a blast. Thank you so much for, for thinking of me and for, for tracking me down. I really, really appreciate this. This has been yeah, a course. joy for me. Thank you, uh, thank you very wonderful. much. Julie. It means a lot. And thank you thank so much you. Uh, for for what you've, what you've done over the years, you know, what, what you've done for, for Bay of Bob. You know, you know, three of us, you know, we're big Barney fans. And, you know, yes, we are. And, you know, I mean, I mean, I mean, that show in particular means so much so much to, to us in so many ways and we want you know chat with us you know talk about your barn your other things you've done it means it means it means so much so thank you very much to come on and well, thank I, you because barney could have, barney and baby bob and bj could have been out there singing their little hearts out and if kids weren't watching us it wouldn't have it wouldn't have worked so it was yeah. the, it was the kids and it was yeah. you guys yeah. thank you very much thank, thank you, you so, so much and can thank i can't wait for Yes, of course. And thank you. And, and can I wait what you're doing now? And can I wait what's next in store? 
Yeah. Give a good yes. look at what you're what you're doing currently. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Thank, yes. You. Thank, thank you, Julie. Thank you for taking time to do this. Enjoy the rest of your day. You're very welcome. All you're right. Welcome, you too. You've made mine wonderful, by the way. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, Julie. Bye. 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 It's goodbye from us as well. We absolutely enjoyed our time speaking with Julie Johnson. Uh, keep on the lookout for more wonderful interviews coming your way. And as always, what do we say, Jake? Keep nostalgia alive. Take care, everyone. See you next time. See ya. Bye. 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 Take care. Thank you for tuning in to another wonderful Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show interview. Be sure to follow Jake and the crew on social media and stream the show wherever you find your favorite podcasts. And as always, remember to keep nostalgia alive. Bye-bye.